So you wanna create visualizations in Spotfire. And why wouldn't you? That's one of the major reasons why anyone would use Spotfire. Well, data visualization is a big field in and of itself, and there's a lot to consider. So this video is just gonna go over the basics of the construction, but we also have another video on styling and configuring the visualizations that goes into more detail. And then another video on building a user experience that shows some best practices. In this video, I'm gonna show a bar chart, a line chart, and a scatter plot. These are some of the most commonly used visualizations. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the data structure because that's an area I often see new users struggle with. And it's an important part of how you can make your visualizations work for what you're trying to communicate. So let's get started. So here I have a data set on honeybee production in the United States. And this is a very clean data set because I have all the variables neatly organized in these columns. And then across this, I have the observations in different rows. And that's gonna be very important when we construct a visualization. And I'll, and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, to create a visualization from scratch, I'm gonna go to the visualization panel and you'll see all of these out of the box available Spotfire visualizations. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this scatter plot and Spotfire actually looked at the data and tried to take its best guess at what I might wanna see. It's colored each of these points by the different states and it's done a percent yield and total production for all these honeybee colonies. Now, each of these little dropdowns are column selectors. And when you click them, it might actually open up like this in this narrow form. You can just click this little door icon and expand it where you can change the display name and add expressions. And the scatter plot is really just looking at one point against another point, usually a, a measure, a, a numerical value against another numerical value. So I have that here on the y-axis. I have all these individual numerical values and I have that here also on the x-axis. And, and when I click an individual data point, you'll see that these data points are all selected uh, as an individual point in, on my scatter plot. Now I can turn on and off my legend here and I can go into my visualization properties for some deeper configuration, but that's again talked about in the styling and configurations video. Today we're just gonna look at the actual construction here of this visualization. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually create a bar chart and I'm gonna put the bar chart over here on the top and I see that this has each state and row count and I can change this to something like total production. And you'll see here that it is using an average. A bar chart is using an aggregation. It must use some kind of aggregation method. So I can do an average or I can do a sum. I can change all of these. I can do a minimum. Uh, I have to have some type of aggregation. So let's talk about what aggregations are for a second. So here we're gonna go into how data works. And this might seem like very basic stuff, but I think it's important to go over. So all data is divided into two types, numerical and categorical. Numerical is exactly how it sounds, it's just numbers. And categorical are things like text. So here I have different states and I have different ratings. It could be things like flavors of ice cream, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Those are all different categories. Now this is further subdivided where you can have two different types of numerical. You can have discrete and continuous. And discrete are just fixed intervals. So it's things like my stocks or my colonies and the honeybee data. I'm not going to have partial honeybee colonies. They're only going to be whole colonies. Now you can have continuous as well, which are things like the percent yield or the price per pound. Those have really essentially an infinite number of intervals. You can always have fractions of a cent and fractions of that money. So you can continuously go uh, in a continuous interval there. Now, categorical is nominal, meaning that there is no order in the data. There's things like the state. It doesn't really matter if it's Alabama or Texas or Oklahoma or what order it's in. Uh, but then there's things like ordinal where the rating does matter, like these categories of so good, very good, acceptable. That order does matter. So now let's talk a little bit about the aggregations. So when you're aggregating data, numerical data can be aggregated mathematically in things like averages and sums, and that's what we saw on our bar chart. But things like categorical data can't be aggregated mathematically. There is no average of the states. So that is aggregated with things like first, which is just gonna be the first value uh, for that category, or concatenate, which just concatenates all the unique values. So let's go back to our visualizations. 
So here again, I have this data aggregated. So the bar chart's gonna expect a categorical value on its x-axis on one axis and a numerical value on the other axis. This is sometimes called the value axis. And what I can do is I can actually make this horizontal by right clicking and I'll just swap this here. And now I can see the state names a little bit better. And you can see this is all of my numerical values. This is now a sum. And if I want, I can change this name right here and just make this total production, which has that sum again in there. And that will change the name and I can kind of clean that up a little bit if I want. So now let's talk about line charts. So I'm gonna create a line chart here, and this has an option to have an aggregation or to not have an aggregation. And that's because if I wanted to, let's say, do this by each state, I can do a state here for its color by, and that is splitting this all up into individual states. Now I have the average for all of these values if there's multiple values per year. But I could also do none and that way, if there weren't multiple values, it will change it to have no aggregation. And you also see that some of these years are here at the bottom. I can do things like turn off the auto binning and make that all in these fixed values. So now those values aren't binned and I can see the percent yield non-aggregated. Now the other way I can create visualizations is directly through search. So I can go here, I'm gonna go to a new page. I'm gonna hit Control F on my keyboard. I'm gonna say, which state has the highest production? And Spotfire is gonna give me some recommendations. It's finding a couple map charts. And I'll say, view the total production per state. And here it's given me these geometries and it's showing me the total production is up here in North Dakota. That is the highest. So very easy way to create visualizations right from search. And what you saw there were some AI recommendations. That can also be driven by going to your data panel and you can click a target variable that you're interested in, just one value that you wanna see more of. And Spotfire is gonna find relationships with all the other variables and it's gonna recommend these by the strongest relationships. So the relationship with total production and production value is here in this chart, the scatter plot. And let's say I like that relationship, but I don't wanna do a scatter plot. I can hit more like this and now I get different other charts and I can select from these other charts using that relationship. And these I can just grab and drag right onto my visualization. Now the last thing to consider is what is it that you're trying to communicate? And you're typically trying to do a comparison, a relationship, a distribution, or a composition. And here are some different examples of how you can show those different messages and communicate those to your audience. And you'll notice a lot of this is scatter plots and line charts and bar charts. You can do so much with just those three types of charts, but there are also other charts available to you in Spotfire. So if you like, you can pause this. I'm gonna disappear here for a second and you can pause and look at this visualization and this cheat sheet guide.